miss you. I'd like to know why the women in this prison have to see their children through a glass wall. It's a security measure. A standard policy for most prisons. And the policy stinks. Yes, we are. I'm here. I tell you, I think they were locking us up, putting us through all that. Mark, you were a cop. You all people ought to know about jail security. I do, I do. It just feels funny, that's all. Being frisked, fingerprinted, mug shots. Well, now you know what it's like on the other side. Yeah, I hate it. Okay, initiation's over. Time to go to work. You heard the lady. Great. I spent my whole life as a cop. I end up in jail. Now, don't mind my friend Mark here. He's a little nervous. Oh? Yeah, first day of school jitters. I've been that my way my whole <laughs> life, too. Yeah, but you're the teacher. Yeah, but we're going into a classroom filled with strangers and all, you know. Don't you mean a classroom filled with prisoners? Yeah, I do. I'm a little nervous about it, Miss Kanner. Call me Melanie. And Mark, trust me, you're going to do just fine. These students are receptive. They're very eager to learn. How many have you signed up? Well, only eight so far, but we'll get more as time goes on. This is a very exciting day for us. Yeah? Why is that? I've been a social worker for eight years, and I've spent most of that time trying to make things even a little better for the women in here. Getting a high school program was not easy, but it was worth the fight. Hey, I'm surprised. I thought most jails offered courses to help train the inmates for when they got out. You were wrong. Let me introduce your new teachers. This is Mr. Smith and Mr. Gordon. How you doing? Okay, man. You're on your own. <laughs> all right, ladies. We all know why we're here. Well, I'm here for writing bad checks. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> your turn. All right. Look, I think the best way to start is for us to get to know each other. 
So I'd like each one of you to introduce yourselves, and if you don't mind, tell us why you'd like to get your high school diploma. We can start right in the front. Uh, I am Maria Rojas, and I would like to graduate high school in uh, order to set a good example for my baby. That's a very good reason. What do you do, Maria? Last month. <laughs> <laughs> it could be at any time. All right, next. Evelyn Walker. Guess I'm here because I want to make something of myself. I got kids, you know? I'm not going to be here forever. I want a decent job when I get out so I can take care of my kids. That's all. Patty Duncan, I just figure as long as I'm here, I might as well be learning something. That's good. Next. Uh, Reba William. I got five kids, and I thought maybe, maybe I was to get my diploma then maybe they could be proud of me for something. Here you go, have another milk. Pregnant lady can't get too much. Well, that's sweet of you, Mr. Gordon, but I can get my own. No, 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 you stay put. Now, didn't be on your feet too much. Looks like that baby could make an appearance at any moment. <laughs> You're right about that. Thank you. Mind if I ask you a question? I don't mind. How did you get yourself in? You know, in this condition. You don't know how it happens? <laughs> I don't mean, how did you get pregnant? I mean, didn't you think about your baby before you committed your crime? I'm sorry, I had no right. That's OK. I made mistakes, I admit it. But I'm going to make up for those mistakes. My baby will not suffer from my sins. Mr. Inman. I'd like you to meet one of our new teachers. This is Mr. Smith. This is our warden. Thomas Inman. Jonathan Smith. I hope the women here appreciate the opportunity we're affording them and take advantage of it. I'm sure they will. They've been doing very well so far. It's good to hear. Yes, indeed. Well, would you uh, care to finish your lunch with me in the staff dining room? You'd probably be more comfortable. Actually, I'm very comfortable right here with my students. Would you like to join us for lunch? Um, no. I think not. Another time, perhaps. Man is insufferable. You think he was the one who was responsible for starting this high school program when I fought him for five years before he consented? Why? Why is he so afraid of change? Oh, it's not just Thomas Inman. It's the entire penal system. The system's hardly changed in the last 200 years. It's still based on the notion that society would rather see offenders punished than rehabilitated. All right, now I want you to read chapters one and two of Using Your Dictionary and do the exercises at the end of each chapter. Any questions? Does neatness count? Always. And when you're done with that, there's something else I'd like you to do. I want you to write an essay. Aww. All right, take it easy, relax. All I want is a couple of pages. Just want to get an idea of your writing skills. What do we write about? Something you know about yourselves. Boring. <laughs> Not my life, honey. I got a bestseller just waiting to be told. Yeah, well, like I said, only two pages. All right, I know it's visiting day, so I'm going to dismiss the class a little bit early. I want to thank you all for your attention. <laughs> Mr. Smith, thanks for letting us go early. My kids are coming today. Have a nice visit, Evelyn. Thanks. Smith. How you doing, Maria? Fine. Mama Eva, this is one of our new teachers, Mr. Smith. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smith. Hot time we got some teachers in here. <laughs> Eva Haskell. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Everyone's spoken, Mama. She may be chief matron here, but she is more like a housewife. Oh, so you're going for natural childbirth. 
I am going to try it, but I'm not sure how brave I am. <laughs> oh, you'll do fine. You just listen to your nurse, because she's the most important person in that delivery room. <laughs> the doctor, he's only the catcher. Remember <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, look at the time. My break was over five minutes ago. I got to run, Mr. Smith. Nice meeting you. Same here. You take it. Seems like a nice lady. I don't know what I would have done without Mama Eva. She has taught me everything about being pregnant. I was so frightened. There was so much I didn't know. Well, you've seen a doctor. Only once. They would only bring a doctor if you get very ill. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me you're nine months pregnant and you've seen a doctor one time. That is why I'm so grateful to Mama Eva. Maria, what's going to happen with your baby? That is not a problem. Really. My grandmother is going to take care of him. She is a wonderful woman. She raised me after my mother died when I was a child. And I only have seven more months before my parole, and then I will raise my baby myself. Opens your eyes, doesn't it? Visiting day is pretty much of a downer around here. It's funny, though. These women look forward to it every single time. Can't wait to see their kids, their families. It's just so damn hard for them to say goodbye. They're usually depressed for days afterwards. That's what happens when you break the law. You're right, of course, but the problem is, the kids pay, too. I have tried so hard to get contact visitation rights for these women. It breaks my heart. See, I'm trying to reach to each other through a glass wall. Very good reason for that glass wall, Miss Cannon. You know it. I was a cop. I know what people will do to try to get weapons or drugs into a prison. They'll even use their own kids to Fine. smuggle it in. Then search the women afterwards if that's a concern. But for God's sake, these women need to touch and, and hold and caress their children. And I guess the children need it most of all. I miss you. I miss you very much. I love you. Give me a kiss. Mr. Inman? Yes, Mr. Gordon, what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you a question. Please do. I'd like to know why the women in this prison have to see their children through a glass wall. It's a security measure. Standard policy in most prisons. Well, then the policy stinks. Is that your expert opinion? After all, you've only been here one day, Gordon. Hardly enough time to understand the criminal justice system. Look, I was a cop for 20 years. I know the system. Believe me, I've seen the lowest of the low. People who should be locked up never see the light of day again. But a lot of the women in this prison are mothers. So we are dealing with women and children here. 
seems to me that should make a difference in the way we treat them. Not to me, it doesn't. I didn't convict those women. They committed a crime, and the state says they have to pay. I'm just here to see they do their time, and that's all. But the children of these women are innocent. And so were their victims. Look, you may as well know. I never wanted you men here. You were forced down my throat by that pushy social worker. Well, you're here now. We'll get along just fine, so long as you do your job and let me do mine. almost 12. He's the man in the family. Then there's Robert. He's just learning to write, and he sends me letters almost every day. Joel is my baby. He's only six. He gets asthma real bad, and it scares me. I can't be there when he's hurting. I have two beautiful daughters also. Patricia always wanted to be a dancer. She's very talented, and I hope she can have her dream someday. Martha is my oldest. She's 14, <clears throat> as her birthday was only last week. I haven't seen Martha since I've been here. She doesn't write but I know that teenagers are busy and don't have time for such things. She must be turning into quite a lady, and I'm sorry I can't be there and watch it happen. But I am still very proud of her and love her very much. All in all, we're a loving family and we're looking forward to the day we can all be together again. Leva, that was very nice, thank you. I think that's about all we have time for today. Leva, I'd like to have you stay after class for a few minutes. The rest of you are excused. Kids being well cared for. Yes, sir. Best I can tell. Miss Tucker, my social worker, looks in on them and lets me know how they're getting on. You ever get to see them? Once in a while. Robert lives the closest. His foster mother brought him to see me a few months ago. And Miss Tucker gets to bring Joel sometimes. And the others write, and I talk to them on the phone every now and then. Why doesn't Martha write? I heard her bad, Mr. Smith. Lord knows, I was only trying to make life better for my kids when I stole some money. I knew it was the wrong thing to do, but I was real desperate at the time. But instead of making things better, I made them a whole lot worse. And I don't think Martha will ever forgive me for tearing apart our family like I did. She's ashamed of having her mama in jail. I know it. She's been telling her friends I'm in a hospital instead. Have you tried calling her? I try sometimes. She wouldn't come to the phone. Mr. Smith, I thank you for your concern. 
but we're going to manage. I just got over six months left, and then we're going to be a family again. This case is typical. The children of most of these women live in foster homes all over the state. There's nobody providing means for them to travel to visit their mothers. So if the foster parents of the families don't see fit to bring them, they don't come. Jonathan, some of these women don't see their children the entire time they're in here. Let's make it pretty hard to keep a family together. Tell me about it. And Thanksgiving's coming. The holidays are really rough. I mean. You know, it's hard enough being separated from your family, your loved ones, any time. But on holidays... What happens to these women? They leave, try and pick up their lives. Some of them are successful. Others have just lost too much. A lot of them even lose their children. What do you mean? If a woman with a baby is incarcerated and she has no relatives to take over, the baby's put in a foster home. Well, Foster parents don't have any incentive to bring the baby for visits. So the court often decides that the baby should remain with the parents it's bonded with. It allows them to adopt. Where does the law say a crime is punishable by fine, imprisonment, and the loss of your children? It doesn't. But it happens. Every day. There was this company over in England. It was called the New England Company. Someone got the bright idea to send some people over here, settle down and search for gold. They settled in Jamestown. Mr. Gordon, I always thought people came over here to practice their religion, not look for gold. Uh, good point. Some of them did. Those were the Puritans. They came over a little later, settled in New England, at the Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts. Maria? Mr. Gordon, I, I think it's time. Time for what? We just got started. I think she means it's time to make a baby. A baby? Baby? Isn't she adorable? It's a spitting image of Maria. Look at that little turned up nose. I'll tell you, she looks healthier now. Healthy? You should have heard her beller when she came out. She's got a pair of good, sturdy lungs in her. That's because Maria took real good care of herself while she was pregnant. Oh, she got a name yet? Anita. Maria named her after her grandmother. They're real close. Oh, Ellen, Ellen, you're just in time. You gotta look at this. Well, of course, the star of the show is kind of nodded off here, but at least you can take a look. Oh, boy, she's beautiful. How's Maria? Oh, Maria's fine. She came through like a trooper. Yeah, sitting on top of the world right now. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for her. Bad news? Yeah, I, uh... I called the Children's Welfare Office this afternoon to let them know that Maria had delivered. And they told me that they'd just done a field report on Maria's grandmother, the one who's supposed to take care of the baby until Maria's released. And? And they found the woman to be old and semi-invalid and in no condition to care for an infant. But what are they going to do? I only know what the courts have done in the past. They're going to take Maria's baby. What are you talking about? They can't do that. Yes, they can. It's the court's opinion that a baby needs a mother. This baby has a mother. Maria's her but mother. But Maria is in jail, Mark.
That looks like fun. Smith, what are you doing here? Uh, my place is close by. I like to take walks. Nice looking family you got. I only wish I could spend more time with them. Seems like I leave for work every day before my daughter gets up and she's in bed asleep when I get home at night. I'd like to take an afternoon off once in a while just so we can be together as a family. That's a good idea. It's important for families to be here. You didn't just happen by here, Smith. You want something. What is it? Not that much. I want you to prove the reforms that Melanie Canner's requested for the last five years. Oh, is that all? The woman's a crusader. She wants the moon. Oh, no, she doesn't. She wants a children's center so mothers can be with their kids. It's a basic need in people, Mr. Raymond, to, to hold, love, and touch. Is that too much to ask? Is it too much to ask that a boy be able to hug his mother or that a mother be able to wipe away a little girl's tear? Contact visitation is out of the question. And we want a nursery so that babies can be raised in prison by their mothers. Keep dreaming. So that Maria Rojas can keep her baby. So that Evelyn Walker and others can raise and nurture their children at a time in their lives that's so important to their development. There is no way. It just doesn't happen. You can make it happen. You're really something. You know that? We have experts who design our penal systems. You're just a school teacher. What do you know about it? Oh, it doesn't take an expert to see what's happening to these children. Of course, I guess it's a lot easier just to forget about it. Prison is no place for children. A child's place is with its mother. You can separate these prisoners from society, Mr. Inman, but you have no right to put a wall between a mother and a child. You make it sound like a threat, Smith. I'm not threatening you, Mr. Inman. I'm just giving you something to think about. I'll let you be with your family. That was fun, Daddy. Can I ride it again? Sure, honey, all you want. Who is that man you were talking to? No one important. I want to make a collect call from Reba Williams. I want to talk to Martha Williams. Thank you. Hello? Collect call from Reba Williams for Martha Williams. Will you accept the charges? No. Baby, please let me talk to you. What's wrong, baby? I'm scared. I'm here, baby. It's all right. Sweetheart. What? Sweetheart, I'm here. It's all right. Sweetheart, I'm here. It's all right. I'm all right, just a nightmare is all. I'm fine. Are you sure? I'm sure. You go back to sleep. 
I'm going downstairs to get some milk. Like a nightmare, isn't it? Not being able to hold your child. Who are you? Just a teacher. And you're right, I don't know much about the penal system. But I do know something's very wrong here. So by this time, France and Great Britain were arguing over who gets what. And of course, a war breaks out. The French and Indian War. Right. Who won? The English. They took uh, Canada, all the territory east of the Mississippi, except for New Orleans. Right again. <laughs> Look, why don't you guys read up on the Stamp Act, okay? I'll be right back. Maria, why don't you join our skull session over here? We're about to start the Revolutionary War. Maria, you're missing a great chance to get your diploma. Graduate from high school by the time you get out of here. I don't care about that. This doesn't matter anymore. She's yours, Maria. Forever. What happened? I wish I knew. Mr. Inman just called and he said, get the baby, bring her to Maria. Can she keep her here? Yes. We are going to have a prison nursery for all babies under one year. They can live here with their mothers. Miss Cantor, my Allison is six months. Can she come too? She sure can, and that's not all. The warden said that we can use the dining halls at Children's Center. That means from now on you can sit and talk to your kids. You can hold them, play games with them, tell secrets. <laughs> Help them with their homework. Oh, shoot, they can help me with my homework. <laughs> I have been trying for years to get the simplest reforms established here and gotten practically nothing. And now, he just gives all of this overnight. It's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle.
How's it going? Well, it's not Rembrandt, but it's bright. <laughs> I think it looks great. Yeah, so do I. Doing great. <laughs> Hey, Reba, Thanksgiving vacation. Not gonna spend it doing homework, are you? Oh, no, sir. I'm writing letters to my kids. Then I'm gonna be here tomorrow. Huh? No, sir. It's Thanksgiving. All the foster families got plans for the day. When's the last time you were all together? Not since I've been here. Birthdays we've missed, holidays. It's gonna be a long time before we're together, Mr. Gordon. Scares me to even think about it. I keep wondering if we can ever be a family again, or are we just gonna be a house full of strangers? Well, I'd say about 11 o'clock, Mrs. Elliott. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Okay, you tell Joel we'll see him then. Bye. Well, that's it. Four out of five, anyway. Maybe we gotta try Martha one more time. I don't think there's much use. She made it pretty clear she doesn't want to see her mother. You can't force something like this, Mark. Yeah, you know. Just be so perfect for Reba, the whole family, you know? We had our miracle with Warden Inman. Anyway, Reba's going to be thrilled to see the rest of her kids. Yeah, I know. You're right. Come with me, please. Is something wrong? I don't know. Ward Nimmin wants to see you. Do you know what it's about? He wouldn't say, but I wouldn't keep him waiting. Martha Yes. I'm Jonathan Smith. I work with Melanie Cantor at the prison. What do you want? I just wanted to ask you one more time if you wouldn't visit your mother today. I told the lady no. 
I know. I was hoping you'd reconsider. Why? Because she's my mother? No. No, because she loves you and misses you. Well, she should have thought about that before she wrecked our family. Don't you think you've punished your mother enough? I'm not punishing my mother. Oh, then what do you call it? I call it even. <laughs> Look what she did to us. Your mother made a bad mistake, and nobody knows it better than she does. She's paid for it. Believe me, she's paid. And I'm glad. You know, Martha, it's all right to hate what your mother did. It's even all right to hate her. But do you love her? She ruined everything. But do you love her? She deserves everything she gets for hurting us. But do you love her? Answer me. Do you love your mother? Answer me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, let's just hold on a minute. What do we always do before a meal? Our dear and most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you on this day of Thanksgiving to thank you for all that you have so abundantly provided. We thank you for this food Mama. we're about to eat, and we Hush, Joe. Not when I'm talking to the just wondering something. I was wondering how many families there are out there on this Thanksgiving who can't be together. Yeah. I wonder how many families there are out there who are together and don't realize how lucky 